this isn't going to be like a normal, well, I don't even know what normal presentation at WordCamp is really considered. Uh, I like questions. I do not know everything. Uh, there are a lot of uh, more knowledgeable people in this room than I, and I, I will admit it firsthand. I like to surround myself with smart people, one of which are my three kids. They are a lot smarter than me. Um, but who I am, uh, I sum it up in three words, or three, three words, media, marketing, geek. I'm currently a digital media strategist slash web developer for, for a uh, local advertising agency called the Ullman Group. Uh, they're actually a, one of our sponsors. Okay. Um, some things that I've worked on in the past has things you might have heard of, things you might not have, and go, oh, I think I might have submitted to I hate my coworkers.com. <laughs> I started that about uh, six years ago. I was a little upset. I said, you know what? I know there are people out there that share my misery. Because misery loves company. And it's actually done very well. Uh, I have done everything from chess club directories. I actually at one time used to run a hip hop magazine online that was nominated by VH1 Hip Hop Honors. Uh, I've worked with great freelancers that have done stuff like for Goodwill in Cincinnati, and we've done their SEO. Uh, Hartzell Propeller, which is the global leader in uh, uh, producing awesome propellers. Uh, Land of Illusion, has anyone ever heard of them? Yeah, I know, you. Uh, best Halloween screen park, amusement park ever. If you love that kind of stuff, it's a great time. Always try to push them. Um, I say that because in SEO, you can't just go, well, I just want it for my business, or I just want it for this product. SEO needs to apply to anything you do online. So basically, right now, if you have your laptops or tablets, if you Google yourself, are you going to see yourself? Well, that's, I mean, that's one of the points of SEO is how well, and if you don't see yourself, are you going to see something that someone's writing about you? Because that can be scary. There was a story a couple years ago. A high school kid got his iPod taken away by an assistant principal. The dad got mad. Well, the dad was a computer guy and didn't like the assistant principal. So he signed his name, the, the assistant principal's name, up to hundreds of porn sites. Harmless. No. Until the assistant principal saw a job offer for main principal. And then all of a sudden, they Google his name. And what comes up? All the porn sites that he's registered to. I say that because you need to be aware of where your name is out there. Um, and when I say that, it's not always going to look like this. Uh, this is ba a basic search engine result page, which is called a SERP. And I'm going to dive more into the WordPress section. But it's some things that you need to be aware of when you are optimizing your website. Because there are different ways. And I don't know if anybody knows about Moz.com. Show of hands. SEO, well, it used to be SEO Moz. Um, there's a graphic out there, and I kind of cut it up a little bit. But these are actually breakdowns of different ways that uh, results can be displayed, from a carousel to songs to uh, images, uh, informational, shopping. Again, very kind of general, but that's the way your product, your service, or even your brand can be displayed. So you got to make sure that you're optimizing it in the best way that you want it. Again, it kind of goes on. Again, this is just for like taco shells or how to make a taco on, on YouTube. Because who owns YouTube? Google. And it goes on to even the reviews. Uh, someone wrote an article about it. So their authorship uh, image is there. And we'll talk about that as well. Uh, the images, and then towards the end, because no one really actually goes past page one. How many times have you actually gone to page three of a search result on a daily basis? Never, unless it's you're probably looking for your own brand 
and you're going, I know I'm in here. I know I'm in here somewhere. <laughs> and I have done that, especially when we have clients and they're going, no, we paid company to do this, this, and this. I'm sorry, it, they didn't do what they said they were going to do. So pretty much you gotta start from scratch. And I say this because with WordPress, it's so easy, but just one check mark, check box, can make you never be crawled by Google ever. A simple discourage search engines from your indexing this site. And that's in your general settings. Again, very basic. But you do that, and Google Webmaster Tools tries to crawl it, denied. And guess what? Until you uncheck it and resubmit it, it's never gonna get crawled. And the way that one of the ways you can find out once it is crawled, site, semicolon, the URL. And you'll see everything that's been crawled so far. And you're going, ooh, I didn't want that post or that page published. Too late, it's out there. Update it, resubmit it to Google, and I'll mention that down the road. Again, starting from scratch, some common settings. We've all probably seen this when we set up a new website. It's the URL permalink structure. Some people keep it at the default with the P equals one, two, three. I strongly urge you not to do that. I cannot overemphasize this. Do not do that ever. Um, now there are several day names, month, and you know, numeric. It's all fine, but I highly, you know, emphasize, you know, depending on how your site is laid out, to do category post name. If you're, doing, if you're just talking about one subject, if you're talking about product X, then just do the post name, because that's all you're going to be blogging about, or writing press releases about, or news. So it, it's not one step for all. So if you're constantly writing content, then maybe the day and name. So it looks better. The month and name, so people can actually say, oh, this was written two weeks ago. And there are all sorts of things that you can actually put in there. I'm not going to go through each one, but their WordPress Codex is a great resource if you don't know about it. So that's like the basic of uh, basic settings when it comes to WordPress SEO. So now let's talk about a little bit more optimization. Everybody has a, some type of WordPress site, right? Or trying to set one up? Drupal. Oh, Drupal's great. <laughs> So you got images on there, right? You take a photo, and then you pop it in, and, so, and you keep it with that long string, that dcn12572.jpg. 1257 No, please never, ever, 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 ever do that. That drives me up the wall. If you're talking in the, this simple example of a Monopoly chance card, you want to label it correctly. Again, the link URL. Monopoly chance card. You want to optimize it to what your content is speaking about. And the reason I bring up this silly example, because right now, well, as of a couple days ago, if you actually Google Monopoly chance card, out of five million results, the images show first. I'm the first one on the image. I, didn't, I wasn't trying to write about Monopoly chance cards. I'm not trying to sell Monopoly chance cards. I just wrote a blog post about it about taking chances. I just, that's just the way it is. So when I say optimize your image, optimize it. Yes, sir? The, des the description area in there, is that just for internal use? I've never quite gone down below. The caption? No, below, it's not oh. on the screen, it's down below the bottom. Is it, I've never, I was never sure if that was for internal use or that. More internal. Um, Google crawls the alt tag, title tags. Um, but, but not, but not the description. I haven't seen it really come across. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please speak up. Because, I, like I said in the beginning, I don't know everything. It's Yep. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, if you're just putting it into a blog post or a page, it's not going to display. It, again, depending on the way the theme is laid out. There's nothing wrong with having the title and the alt tag saying you get more juice from 
as long as the, I try, I, I say yes, but there, I, there's always an asterisk. Uh, you, you could switch it up. You know, if I talk about Monopoly chance card and I put sorry, game, board game, it's not going to work. Google's going to say, well, which one is it? Um, so it's one of those things. I try to at least keep them as close as I can together. Again, this is my personal blog, so I just do a copy paste real quick because I need to get onto my client's project. <laughs> But again, it's one of those things that you need to evaluate when you're creating that content or creating that layout for the website. <coughs> when, you're, when you're optimizing those images, what are you thinking about when you put those alt tags in? Because, for example, you optimize for Monopoly Chance Card, and so you're, you've optimized for that. So anybody that searches for Monopoly Chance Card will find you. Right. But would you have done it differently if you were trying to optimize for taking chances in business or something along those lines. Exactly. I mean, and then and I could have done it that way too. Uh, the biggest thing is when you have an image, you don't, and you go, oh, it's a Monopoly Chance card. I'm just going to, no, it's a Monopoly Chance card. But if you're doing it for a product X and you're saying, take a chance on, your pro on this product X, then do it that way because you want to basically optimize your images for the content. It all goes back to great content. And I should have started this with this saying, you can't beat Google. You cannot beat them. You cannot cheat them. They are much smarter. They have more money. Yeah, and they want your money. Um, but yes, you, you want to optimize for whatever your content is. Again, mine was taking a chance. And I grabbed the image and used it. Some, of, some people don't know that you can optimize your... Uh, archives so when people somehow come across your site guess what you can put in basically a description what we mentioned earlier uh, except for images it's now for your uh, categories um, it's also for your tags but th people don't realize that so but it's crawled by Google anything that's crawled by Google you want to try to optimize as much as possible if you're talking about marketing you want to talk. You want to have some type of description about marketing, and yes, you can put HTML in there to kind of make it look nicer. This is my personal site, so I didn't really care. And when I said, "Well, you want your everything kind of optimized around your content," this is basically a, a great example. Yes, it's chocolate donuts from Mary's Bakery. They got a photo of uh, donuts. They're always talking about donuts throughout. So you want to get your content to stand out about it. Another example where it gives you links, your image, your title tag, your list item, your bold items. Your, uh, th there's so many different little things that go into it. And, I, and we're going to touch on about it, uh, some of them. But you need to be aware of it when you are creating that content. It's not a, just a plug-in install. Oh, I got that. I'm good. I don't need to do anything. No, you have to craft your content. And there are some content marketers out there that can actually help you with this. They can say, well, what's your, what are you trying to sell? What do you want people to see when they search for product X? Or search for your brand? How do you want to be represented? And I mentioned plugins. There are plugins. So you don't have to do everything by hand. And I can't, and there are SEO plugins out there. There are a few, but there's one that I've always used on every <laughs> website I've ever worked on, probably in the last four years, WordPress SEO by Yoast. If you're not using that, that's fine. If you're using all-in-one SEO, that's great. Both of them have a ton of bells and whistles, but I have found SEO by Yoast to be one of the best ones uh, currently out. Does anyone else use Yoast? Anyone use all-in-one? You use them all on different. Um, I say, excuse me, I say Yoast is great. And like WordPress, there are tons of bells and whistles. But not everyone uses all those bells and whistles. So he has stuff such as social, XML sitemaps, your permalinks, your RSS. I mean, his XML sitemap structure, I, I, ne I ne have never agreed with it because the way that it breaks down, and I'll show you what a sitemap. You see this URL at the top, top sitemap.xml. This is what basically a sitemap looks like when Google crawls it and you submit it to Google Webmaster Tools. 
But with Yoast, it gives you dot com slash page sitemap dot xml post dot you know sitemap dot xml. That's a lot of sitemaps. Now, it's great, but it's personal preference. I don't advertise that much. T what about you, Tim? Do you? I've gone with all of one SEO for almost everything I've done, um, simply because I feel like Yoast sticks his nose in my business and tries to tell me how to do things, whereas the other one more just gives me the tools to do it. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, I, I like them both. They both have some advantages, but I usually fall back on the all-in-one. Okay. And then those that don't know what Yoast is, like I said, I kind of that's kind of blurry. You can actually set up the titles for if you have a static home page or not a static home page, but if you have uh, where it's the latest blog post, but you want it to be a real landing page for a certain product or a certain brand, you can actually put it your title uh, name up there, your meta description, post types. You can even do if you have certain taxonomy. If you have custom post types, I mean there are. Again, tons of bells and whistles, but not every site needs it. But it's one of these things that you need to look at and go, did I no index that? Or Google, is Google crawling that my custom post type that I created for product X, service X? Does that make sense? So you need to be aware of these things. These little check mark boxes can hinder your search and result pages. Uh, the permalinks. There's a lot of settings in here, and I could probably talk, and I have given a talk at our meetup group about each individual one where you can strip the category. So when you are, you have different categories, say you're talking about a blog, say you're talking about press releases, say you're talking about news, but you don't want news to show up, you just want the post name, well, you can strip that out. He does that for you. Again, a lot of bells and whistles, but not you don't need every one of them. Uh, Internal links, you can actually have breadcrumbs. Everybody know what breadcrumbs is? No one doesn't? Okay. Breadcrumbs, basically you'll see a little thing at the very top of a post or a page that you're at and says this is where you're at, this is where you came from. It's, if you're on a second level, right above it will be home. If you're in a post or in a certain category, it'll say here's the post title, here's the parent name, here's home. It's, it's great for users that don't have to go, okay, I'm reading this blog post, how do I get back to this category? Because I want to read more. Again, tons of bells and whistles, and I, submit, and, and I suggest if you do use Yoast, go and look at it for yourself because, again, I can say, don't you do this, use this, don't do that, but you've got to find the one that works for you. Again, like all-in-one SEO might be better for you, but I have found Yoast to kind of Whenever I've had a problem with Yoast, I've tweeted out and he's actually responded. So it's one of those, oh, you really care about your product. <laughs> so it's a little bit nicer that way. And just telling me that I'm a dumbass and I set it up wrong, it, I'm okay with that because I don't have a big ego. So can I ask you yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you're creating a post or a page with Yoast, and this is one of the things I do like, I haven't used all-in-one SEO, so I think they kind of do the same thing. At the bottom of each page and post, they give you a snippet preview of what, if Lord willing, you throw that dice in your number one for your focus keyword that you would type in, and it will actually give you uh, SEO example you know what it'll do is go okay well this is the focus keyword and I say keyword but it's really at least three to five l words long tail because how many people search for Nike when they're talking about they want Nike shoes the newest edition no you search for Nike shoes Foot Locker size 12 go as long as you can be as descriptive as you can 
So within this, it gives you kind of, you know, the title, your meta description. It actually even breaks, I don't know, wish it kind of gave you more clearer view. But, uh, so let me update this with the keyword that I just put in. Again, personal site, so I don't really try to focus on words too much. Uh, you'll see this little thing kind of populate depending on how well you're optimized for that specific keyword or key phrase. So now you get this, well, for this uh, particular article, it's schema SEL. Well, uh, it's not in my article heading, it's not in my page title, because it's not schema SEO together, but yet I have schema and SEO together. Those are some bugs that are in there, so you need to just be aware of this when you're creating your content. Uh, it's in the page URL, but it's not apparently in the content or meta description. Does it really matter? Because I have had clients that have gone, called me after three hours of trying to write a blog post about their latest product and go, hey, we're trying to get this bubble green. We, we got to have it we got to have it green because that's how we get the number one on Google for this focus keyword. No, it's not how it works, people. Great content will always win, no matter how poorly it's written. Because <laughs> I write horrible. Like Corey Miller, if you were here, uh, in here earlier, just click publish. Well, guess what? It's my personal blog. I click publish. I take 30 seconds. Um, so don't always try to get these green yeses. If it says no, just take a look at it. Okay, maybe I could optimize this a little bit more, but don't overdo it. Don't be that guy that spends three hours on a blog post that doesn't make sense. And I mentioned the page analysis. Now with the updated uh, information, it, it breaks down where exactly you need to do it. The keyword phrase does not appear in the page title. You know, Not enough subheading tags like an H1 or H2. You know, if you start doing this and you start getting too far into it, you're going down the rabbit hole and you're missing the point of good content. Yes? Can you use both Yoast and all-in-one SEO at the same time without any interference, or is that not advised? I would not. Okay. I, no, no, no. Now, if you go from all-in-one to Yoast, I know Yoast has an import uh, <laughs> uh, option where you can actually import your settings from all-in-one. He wants to get everybody to use his. So that little functionality is kind of cool. Um, the advanced tab is great. Uh, usually when it's set up, it's one of those, yes, it's going to be automatically indexed once it's published. Uh, the robots are going to follow. Um, it's going to be uh, in your directory. It's going to be archived. It's going to be snippet. Uh, it's going to be included in your sitemap. You know, if you wanted to, you could get really geeky and say, you know, I want to redirect it from to this URL. I always tell people, unless you really want to geek out on SEO, don't ever click on this tab because you're never going to use it. But it, if you are creating a page that you guys, you know, you can mark pages or post private, well, it can still get crawled. So if you don't want it crawled, if you don't want it followed, you know, you don't want it indexed. These are things to think about. So does that make sense with the Yoast plugin, meta description, title tags, sitemaps a little bit? Real quick, you yeah. Don't use the sitemap you? I do not. Um, there are another. There's another plugin. It's uh, Google XML sitemaps with an S. Um, and all it does is basically, it's just a plug-in, and it'll say, oh, you haven't created a sitemap. You create sitemap, done. I mean, it's cut and dry. Um, some WP Engine does not like that plug-in if, for hosting. If you, if never, if you use WP Engine, uh, they like Google Map or Google site, XML sitemap without the S. This is what that is. It does the same exact thing. Just a different name, different plugin. I don't know why. I just kind of go with it. Again, yes, sir. Again, I mean, to new users, so what's yeah. the advantage of doing a site versus not doing it at all? 
I'll get to that. But a site map is basically a road map for search engines. Yes, they can just they crawl your site, but this gives them and goes, okay, well, he has a category blog. Okay, well, what's under that category? Or he has product X. What are some products underneath that product X? And it, it, but like I said, it gives you a road map to kind of follow. Again, it, all it is is the links. And it's an XML file that they take and l read through quickly. Now, who here has their own blog that they ha ha when you search for your name or anything, you see your picture like you did on mine? Anybody? Awesome. It's authorship. I say authorship, but it's really Google+. How many people are on Google+. How many people actually use Google Plus? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I get that all the time. Uh, yes, Google has tried to basically force us to use Google Plus. Unfortunately, they are Skynet, so you have to abide by their rules right now. Um, Facebook is great, Twitter's great, Instagram is, is teens, it's weird. LinkedIn is great for the professional photo and resume. But Google Plus, when it comes to SEO, that I cannot overemphasize how involved you need to be with that. In any type of your personal branding, your company's uh, marketing efforts, you need to ha have a page, you need to have a profile, you need to be set up. And I say the way that it's set up, like I said, you search for the name, you see that geeky guy with the little box. Well, guess what? that image is taken from my Google Plus profile. And this is just a screenshot of my Google Plus profile. And it doesn't take long to do this. So has everybody been ever heard of authorship before? Never heard of it? I'm getting a lot of blank stares and, oh crap, what's that? It's basically what Google wants to do is say, well, if you're connected with this blog and you're saying you write for them, well, where's that link back? And there are plugins where you can do Google Plus, you know, Google authorship, where you just basically enter in your Google Plus URL, and then on your profile you say blogs I write, or sites I write for. And once Google sees that, they go, oh, okay, we see that. You must be an authority figure within that blog post, or whatever website so when people search for it it's going to come up hopefully does that make sense man it's quiet you guys I don't like quiet so go ahead and speak up <laughs> anybody heard of this word schema anybody nobody yes a little bit if you've ever searched for anything online and you see reviews, you see testimonies, you see, you go, why did that business come up before mine? And you see their address and you're going, well, our address is on our website. Well, is it optimized correctly? In different ways, you know, the ratings, um, you know, you got different ones, even schedules for sports teams. Uh, I mean, you can do children's events, food events, social events. It all depends on how your site is laid out and what you're trying to hit. Obviously, if you have a site about product X that you, that you never leave the warehouse, you're really not going to need to be optimized for festival. So you have to optimize it the way that needs to be done. And one of those ways is by going to schema.org and they actually list how to do this. They give you examples. And there are some plugins for it. Uh, Raven Tools has a great one for it. Um, again, it's one of those things that's come out in the last couple years, but has really hit in probably in the last year where it's been where Google says well how popular is it with the ratings? How, you know, are people really liking uh, this all recipes.com for this particular recipe. Well, they got a great rating. So yeah, they're gonna be number one or number two. And they're gonna show that little star because 
We like stars, we like images, just like the Google authorship. You're more than likely going to click on something with a picture or something that stands out a little bit more. And just like I showed with those different cutouts um, earlier where we had reviews, ratings, schedules, you gotta optimize it to the way that your brand needs to be developed. And when I talk about SEO, you, you have to talk about analytics. So here, who here has their analytics, a Google Analytics account? Not a plug-in, but an actual analytics account. Now how many of you actually go and look at your analytics account? Look at the numbers. Man, come on guys. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, those that have looked at them, how many of you have actually updated your code for what's called the universal code? I'm not seeing many hands at all. Universal code, Google has kind of rolled out, I think it was November of last year, basically a new code that all you have to do is just change a couple lines of your analytics. And now, because they can't show you the keywords as much, because everybody has a Google account, so you always get that not provided when you try to say, oh, is, is our company coming up for keyword X? Well, if they're logged in, guess what? You can't see it. But now you can see a little bit more. You can see, oh, I'm getting 45 to 54 year olds coming. That's awesome because that's who we're marketing to. You can also cross-reference that with, oh great, they're TV lovers, so we're going to advertise now on uh, TV. So these are things that while in the past we used to go, well, I want to hit this keyword. If I get this keyword, we're going to go gangbusters. Google knows everything. <laughs> they, they know your blood type. It, it's, it's really scary but cool if you're on the other end looking at this stuff going, are we marketing to the right demographic? If you are trying to reach tweens, guess what? You're not writing for tweens. They're not coming to your site. Um, so you need to be aware going, oh crap, we need to relook at our marketing plan. So I strongly urge if you don't have a Google Analytics account to get one and update it to the universal code. And all of that is one of those check boxes, cut and paste, put it in your, your uh, WordPress theme. And I don't want to, and there are plugins again for that, that you, all you have to do is just copy paste. Uh, any questions on the analytics? Yes, sir. I just have one. Yeah. Do you have multiple WordPress websites? Do you need a separate account? Yep. <coughs> yep. Yes. Yes. You can manage your own account, right? What's that? You can link different websites to one account, can't you? Sub accounts, uh, but I strongly urge against that. Uh, I would create well your Gmail. You can actually have 25 solid accounts, but if you're talking about a site about baby food on one account, and then the sub account is Harley Davidson, it's hard to navigate through. Um, I would keep it separate. Now, if you're the baby food, you have a, sub, a different site that's talking about baby clothes, yeah, make that a sub-site, sub-account within that. And again, they, don't, they only allow you 25 accounts. If you have a Gmail, type in uh, your first part, then add the plus sign and put analytics at gmail.com, then you can get 25 more accounts. I've done that several times. And it still works to this day. Okay, so we got, yeah. One more time exactly yeah. on that. Yeah. Oh, if you have a Gmail, like mine is nathan.driver at Gmail. I could put nathan.driver plus analytics or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like my password. So it's one of those things that Gmail kind of, you can trick it a little bit. It's just an alias thing. Exactly. So put in your uh, email address. Yeah. Plus analytics. And It'll get, that just allows you for more accounts within the analytics. Because okay. you're only allowed 25 main accounts. Plus 
Yeah. Plus sub accounts, but it's one of those, you got to be careful with that. Yeah? So we're losing some data because of secure search in terms of the keywords. Um, are they going to slight this data as well? The data is there. The date there are workarounds for that within the actual analytics. But I'm talking about like these infinity categories. Like, are we going to lose visit numbers? That's going to go to like a none category. I don't foresee that happening, because Google, they want you to see how many people are coming to your site, and then they go, well, they we're not going to tell you what keywords got them there, unless you do some tricks to the trade. But if you buy a key or an ad word, it's funny how it works. If you buy AdWords through Google. <laughs> They will now show you the, those uh, that information. So it's one of those. This is the uh, one. Like the tricks of the trade. Yeah, exactly. It, but it's a little complex. And I. But the thing is, if you're writing great content and you're seeing that you're hitting your target demographics, then what? Then you're doing right. You keep going on that same roadmap. So everybody. So we talked about analytics. Now, how many actually have? Google Webmaster Tools. Awesome. A little bit more. How many people of those have actually looked at their Webmaster Tools? Awesome. Those that don't know, Google Webmaster Tools is a little bit different than analytics in the sense that this is basically the geek side of it. Analytics is that fun, ooh, charts, graphs, visits, where are they coming from? Are my, am I hitting 45 to 54 year olds, Am I, are they TV lovers? This is the one where you submit your site map, you, make, you see how many queries they're doing, your URLs are actually indexed, basically what's behind the curtain a little bit more. And within that I mentioned like the site map, there's a location where you can actually submit your site map. So now they have a road map to view uh, your, your content. Those that have Google Webmaster Tools, how many have submitted sitemaps? Fantastic. How easy is it? Very easy. I'm sorry, what? Easy. Easy. How long does it take? 30 minutes? Seconds. Seconds. But it's so important. Again, I can't overemphasize that. But if you're using a plugin in your WordPress site, you don't need to do it again here. Yes, you do. You do. Google, the plugin will create the sitemap for you. This says, hey, here's my sitemap that this plugin created. Go ahead and crawl it now and whenever I create new content. And then you'll start seeing things like this. Wright State University. And then you'll see these little things underneath, these little links. These are called site links. Say you're writing a, uh, what's that? We had an aha moment. Aha. <laughs> You see how they got the actual Google reviews? It's because, guess what? They're in love with Google. They work with Google. They have a Google Plus account. So things to think about. Their address is actually certified with Google Plus. But talking about, yes, it's Wright State University because that's their brand. You know, same as if you search for your company. But it's these sub-site links. If you are looking at say wings. How important is that for someone coming in to view your product? Not very. You want maybe your about page to rank higher. You want that to show up. So you can actually demote site link URLs. So you're going, oh, this wings or libraries, nobody cares about that stuff. They want to know about admission, graduate school, uh, schools and colleges. So you're, gonna, you're, you're actually just enter in the uh, site link URLs that you don't want to sh uh, display within that. Does that make sense? Can you do that in the Webmaster Yes. That, this is all through Webmaster Tools. You can, what I try to do is anytime I do a new theme, which is probably too much with every three months because I'm that guy, uh, I will actually submit my site in Webmaster Tools. And all you do is just submit it, and the way that you know that it's been submitted, you can actually hover over, and it'll give you like a screenshot of what the new layout is. Now, I say that, but don't go and activate a new theme tomorrow, and then tomorrow night, submit it, 
because it's going to take some time for it to be cached internally on your own site. So give it a couple days before you actually submit it uh, to Google. And this is one of those, this is what I do. Uh, and the, uh, it also shows the impressions, your clicks, how many pages. Again, a little bit geeky stuff. This is where it can actually show your content keywords. Again, if you do a little bit digging, you can actually find them. And uh, I, I gotta hurry up this, apparently. Uh, we talked a little about, about Google Plus and how important it is, but you also should be worried about some other ones, such as Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook, obviously. Well, since Google or Facebook didn't want to play nice with Google, they teamed up with Bing. And yes, not a lot of people use Bing, but there are people that do. And that's where some search traffic can come through. Uh, for the U.S., it's 30%. For worldwide, I think it's 20%. But it, it's a big chunk. It, it is a big chunk. Um, but it, it's things that, that you need to think about when you are creating your marketing online. And then I mentioned the Google Plus, how many circles active you are. This is just a simple screenshot of what I found kind of amazing. I, I wrote an article. I, I got, had 30 seconds. I Googled it, said, where do I rank? Well, guess what? The person in the mo with the most circles, friends, the most likes, <coughs> rank a little bit higher. So these are things to think about where you're going, well, I got a Google Plus account. That's fine. I submitted it. I get authorship. That's good. But never go to Google Plus. Think about this next time you do a search for your next article. Uh, some quick resources. Google has, well, they own Blogspot. So you got your analytics, your Google Webmaster Central, google.com slash analytics. They have a great series on that. Anybody heard of Matt Cutts? A couple, yeah, yeah. He is great for learning about SEO. He does a video series. He has a YouTube channel. He has a blog, which is great. Uh, some more resources. Uh, Blind five-year-old is a great one. Uh, the reason it's called that is because when you search, it's like you're online, you're searching like a blind five-year-old, you're just putting keywords out there. Uh, John F. Doherty, he's great. Search Engine Journal, basically anything with search engine and then and put a word in, there's a website with it. But Journal, Land, Guide, uh, SE, Search Engine Roundtable. I mentioned Moz.com earlier, they have a great blog. Um, some, some quick tools. If you have a brick and mortar, getlisted.org, which actually just got bought up by Moz.com, it'll say, well, you're not on Foursquare, you're not on Google Plus Places, or local, or whatever they're calling it this month. Um, you're not in all these, like, a hundred different directory pages that are actually important. Moz.com does have some free tools, but they offer a subscription, which is great. Raven Tools, which is just like Moz, same as Majestic SEO. And for the geeks, this is the Web Development's SEO Cheat Sheet, which is actually through Moz.com, which it actually kind of tells you about your image that we talked about, having the same keyword in your alt and title tag, um, how many characters need to be in your title tag, no more than 70. Uh, meta description, which in that Yoast plugin, that's, this is what they go by. No more than 154, 55 characters because it'll have that dot, dot, dot. And it's kind of annoying because you're reading that description, but yet it doesn't make sense. Uh, 301s, uh, canonical homepage issues, title tag syntax to think about. Real quick, and questions? Comments? Yes? Here is my address, here is my telephone number, I own this brick and mortar, and it just flushes it out everywhere for you rather than... Free? <laughs> 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 Yext, Y-E-X-T dot com, they will do that at a cost. It's, it's, it's not cheap at all. <laughs> and there are, they, yeah. But if you, if, but it'll give you links to say where you're not submitted, and it'll give you where you can actually just go, oh, okay, I'll go to that site and do it myself, and it'll take five minutes. Yes, sir? As a, as a, 
SEO house, what are some good tools to pick up if you're selling this service, you know, pushing out to the, to the directories? What's a good tool set to have in your tool belt? Knowing that Moz, that those tools, the Raven tools, the Majestic SEO, um, search engine, no, Screaming Frog, Spider is, a, is, a, is an app. Um, just different things of, of that. I mean, because not every tool does the same thing. They may claim it, but you use a different one and it'll pick up errors that you've never seen. But yeah, great question. Um, yes? Mm -hmm. Is that because they're flying? I'm not. Bing seems different. Bing is completely different. It, if you were to Google the same keyword from Google to Bing, you're going to get different results. I always say yes, 20, 30% is a huge market, but optimize for Google and try to rank higher for that. But with Safari, I wouldn't even, I, I, that's more a browser. So go towards the major search engines. Anything else? Cool. If you got questions, again, so SEO is so complex and so nerdy, it can't be covered in 30, 45 minutes. So we can chat. Tim can chat. He knows his stuff too. And there are a couple others in here too. So you only have about 10 minutes to get to the next one. Thanks.